So I have a 2006 Pontiac Grand Prix, going to be replacing the radiator. Uh, this is a 3.8 liter Series 3. Um, went ahead and already drained the radiator. On the driver's side on the bottom, there's a, there's a plug. Twist it counterclockwise, drain out all the fluid that's inside the radiator. And because I like a lot of room, I went ahead and just removed the battery, which is, uh, got to remove this right here, which is a 13 millimeter. This one only had one, so replace one or two, set the bar off to the side. Uh, the battery, the battery is held in place. This little stopper on the side, it's a 13 millimeter bolt, comes straight out, and then just uh, angle the battery. You can pull it right up. You don't have to remove that. I've seen that in several videos. That's fine. Didn't even touch it, actually. Twist the battery sideways, put it up, set it on the side. Never touch a battery with your bare hands. Battery acid eats really bad. On the bottom there, there's a there's a plate it's held on by five 11 millimeter uh, bolts. Pull those out, and you can just pull that out. All right. So with this lower radiator hose, which we're, I'm going to be replacing too, um, but if you're not going to replace yours, you don't want to tear these. So these are going to be locked on here. So once you take off your your hose clamp, which is a, it's a straight head or a uh, eight millimeter uh, bolt head uh, take that off these things are gonna be locked on here just twist it twist it just to break it loose and then eventually it'll come out so that's pretty good pretty good draining and then underneath here same thing eight millimeter all right, there. So after you loosen up that eight millimeter, go ahead and slide that out of the way. I have to loosen it up a tiny bit more. All right, loosen that up a tiny bit more. I actually took the whole thing off on accident, but it says on there. So just twist. There you go. I felt the brake loose. Oh, there we go. Here's that hose and the same thing going for the upper radiator hose as you can tell i got my brand new one up here i'll leave links to uh everything in the description upper radiator hose brand new lower radiator hose and where i purchased the radiator for 70 dollars at free shipping uh same thing moving on to your driver's side uh this bolt is also a 13 millimeter you don't have to take all the way out just loosen it these will have to come all the way out. I'll spare you the sound. Just do that. Move the bar over to the side. I always like to put these back in so they don't go missing on me later. Like they did with somebody else on the other side. So next, uh, we are not going to remove these, but we are going to move them. So start off at the top. Two 13 millimeters. Two over here. The next we're going to go to removing the, there's uh, four 13 millimeters in here holding on the bottom part of this, of this bracket. All right, now using a uh, 15 millimeter wrench and a 15 millimeter socket, you can, you don't have to take that bolt off, you just got to loosen it up. Now once you have that loosened up enough, you can pick that up and just get it out of the way. Same thing with the side. And now we can go ahead and remove the upper radiator hose. Um, if you're not going to replace it, just do that eight millimeter, put it off to the side. But like I said, since I'm replacing everything all brand new, I'm getting rid of it. Uh, so whether you do them now or later, you're gonna have to remove these transmission cooler lines. Uh, you're gonna need a pick, which I do not have, but let me try to zoom in. Right there's a little tiny ring, kind of a clip but you're gonna have to pick that out let's see if i can do it with this itty bitty yep got it don't want to lose this all right it's kind of hard to do a filming but that's what you're looking for
I'm probably rusted in there, but there we go. Just pulled out. Now I'm not going to film it because that's going to be impossible, but get down in there. There's another one underneath there that's your, that's your lower, so you're going to have to perform the same task there too. Well, maybe. If I get it from this angle... Got it. Okay, now you want to get those fan plugs out. There's two of them. Now, pull this one out already. There we go. Now you can tell these aren't just normal clips. You gotta pull down instead of push in. That's how you get these out. Yeah, like I said, there's two of them. Where's the other one at? Right there. Now, a bunch more tedious little jobs. You gotta get all those push-in wiring harness holders out. There's one for each fan. one all the way down there. I'm not going to film that, but there you go. There's, there's one down there on the right for this wire. And then you come over here. There's going to be one right there for this wiring harness. And then we got to figure out how to get these all out of the way. All right, since we are going to have to replace these anyways, the fans and the radiator is obviously two separate pieces. So you got 10 millimeter bracket here. You got 10 millimeter here. The one on the far side, and there's more down there. We're just gonna have to like, like two right there, and then there's two on the other side. All right, so I couldn't figure out how to get the air box out. So if you're smarter than me, awesome, good for you. But the bolt right there is gonna be taken out, and this one, since I can't get to it using a an angled wrench, it's all ten mil. All, all of them are ten millimeters. So yeah, we just gotta keep doing that side. And when coming this side, you got. That one right there that needs to be taken out. One covered in transmission fluid. All right, something I absolutely forgot about was uh, the transmission lines are actually connected to the bottom of the fan right there. Right there. Uh, I was tugging and pulling, and those things look very brittle, so um, just pull them out of those little slots. So this is kind of the angle I'm using. I'm taking off the driver's side first so that I can get to that final wiring harness right there at the bottom final two i guess okay so there's so there's six wiring harness clip ins i counted so this is my first time doing it so after that you can take off six before you take out this fan so there was no possible way for me to remove the radiator without removing the factory air box which you have to remove the ecm which is as easy as that clip, that clip, pick it up and pull it out. While I have this off, I'll obviously blow this out. But, little module right there was when the housing itself was sitting on top of this. So, I'll figure this part out and then uh, take the rest out. All right, so something that I found out I had to do, I've not really seen it in any other how-to videos, which, I don't know why this is different or maybe they just did not show it but uh i'm assuming this is the ac condenser yeah that's what it is so uh right back here can't see it but there are those there's a clip right right here you gotta pull out on the clip pushing the radiator down and the condenser up to unlock it there's two on each side all right so we got the new radiator in finally and uh did a side-by-side -side comparison make sure everything's lining up it's actually very happy with this one uh usually you got to reuse the new drain plug but no this came with a brand new drain plug um also new clips for the transmission cooling lines so that's pretty freaking cool so the only thing we have to do next is remove which if yours came with your out with your radiator or stuck but there's these little rubber pieces that go on the bottom of the radiator just like that one was stuck in there but 
and we'll just go ahead and set the radiator in. So to try to show you real quick, um, see the clips on the radiator and there's slots on the AC condenser. Now again, we're gonna have to lift this up, which I'm gonna need two hands, put, them, put those clips inside the slots and then push down to lock them in. And you gotta do that on both sides. Okay, so that is probably by far the hardest part of this entire job is getting these, these clips to get to match up and be in the same exact position as they were. But let me turn the light off for you. All four clips are in. Now you just start to rebuild this thing. All right, so once you put the fan back in, uh, be careful not to rub it up against the actual radiator. Um, but line up all your top brackets. Bolt them back in. Put your two screws over here, one over there, and uh, hey, your fan will be back in. Okay, so now we're gonna pull back up our wiring harnesses and start connecting the fans. And putting back all these push-in clips so they don't rub up against anything. Okay, then we're gonna take our upper line transmission cooler line that is leaking everywhere. Push it in on the top. A little prong down there so it doesn't move. Now to reconnect these. Uh, uh, so you want to push in as far as it'll go then take your pick and slightly move out the uh, clip while pushing this in and it, and it locks in until you hear it click. So after the upper and lower radiator hoses are put back on and in mine case fully replaced, make sure they're nice and tight, looks good. Same thing with your bottom one. I don't have any clamps on this because they were so rust out that they broke, so I had to go find some after this. But while your wires are all tucked away, then you can go ahead and start by replacing or putting back on the, uh, the torque mounts, which again, it's just the four and four. Angle it down there, go from there.